it's Dake's Wake, it's Dake's Wake. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dag Swag. I'm your host, Dagan Parker. With me today, a special guest, all the way from Pictou County, Nova Scotia. He's made stops all across Canada in Calgary, Ottawa, Edmonton. He's been on CP24 TSN. He's currently the co-host of Sportsnet Central, the man with the biggest golf trophy I know personally. He can talk to you about anything sports-related, and he is also the author of five hockey books, the one the only Ken Reed. Kenny, it's a pleasure having you on, man. How you been? Awesome, Dagan. Thanks for the intro. You could have just shortened it up and said professional idiot, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, I know this is going to be a blast for me. Hopefully it's a blast for you. Let... Sorry, we usually we... have fun at work, so I don't see why this wouldn't be fun. This is different, <laughs> you on this side of the camera, though, buddy. This is good, man. Oh, I know. I'm behind the camera whenever you know me, usually. Um, yeah, exactly. So I know you're a big collectible buff like myself. My background, yeah. obviously, I broke out more hockey for you today. The little Naslin team can even got the Gordie Howe plate in the background right there. Nice. Nice. So, you know, let's start with the collectibles aspect of it. And wait, what are your favorite couple cards or collectibles for those who don't know or haven't read your book who yeah. should get your book on amazon yes they damn well should <laughs> uh i i love anything and everything i guess uh basically it started with hockey and baseball cards so uh got a lot of those wrote a couple of books on on hockey cards um but anything I, recently i you know i've always dabbled in helmets i've gotten into old hockey helmets lately oh. basically i will collect anything that takes me back to my youth and when i first fell in love with the game and further than that going back because I, I you know through collect through collecting hockey cards you know when you read the back of a card and you're a kid you find out about something maybe somebody did in 1972 well i wasn't around then so then i <laughs> start reading about 1972 and they yeah. tell me about something they did in 1955 so it just keeps going back and back and, you know, I, I keep learning through hockey history and baseball history all the time, mostly hockey history, though I'm probably more into hockey than I am into baseball cards. But, the, the, you know, at, at one time it was mostly baseball cards. But, um, I mean, just the other night. Period? When um, were you into the baseball cards? Oh, like 89, 90, you know, as, so, as well as hockey. When everybody was into Chase and Ken Griffey Jr., stuff like that. Like, I have just as many baseball cards as I have hockey cards. I mean, that Andre Doss is on the wall behind me. Oh, but um, yeah, uh, I got I got probably, I don't know, 70, 60, 70,000 cards in total, probably half and half baseball hockey. But I mean, just the other night I was, you know, on the Nova Scotia Sports Hall of Fame searching hockey players on that. And I, 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 I rolled across a guy from Amherst, Nova Scotia, Harsborough, Nova Scotia, technically, who played for the Toronto St. Pats. And I found out he had a 1924 tobacco card. His name, I believe, is Stanton Jackson. So that's the big chase I'm on right now, but I'll, I'll show you the other one. So I was on this chase for this guy, Lash Hollett, who was born in Cape Breton, and he was uh, who I thought was the first player from Nova Scotia to play in the NHL, but it might have been the Stanton Jackson guy now, but it all depends on what time they debuted. But this guy's name's Flash Hollett. So I went to the Sports Expo and card show for years looking for flash haul it and i'd go up to the vintage dealers and they'd say no still don't have it still don't have it still don't have it and this sucker popped up on ebay once and i i got it and uh you know i, I was at the last expo here so i'm just going on a tangent but i was at the oh, last I expo, and a buddy of mine a dealer from nova scotia had bought a collection and he said did you ever hear of this guy marty barry i said no he said he coached the halifax st mary's junior team I was like really but i said i usually collect the nova scotia guys he goes this guy's in nova scotia hall of fame so this guy played in the national hockey league back in the day and ended up moving to nova scotia after he was done and coached the halifax st mary's team who played you know high level junior hockey they won an atlantic title they might have played for the memorial cup see again i gotta learn about this yeah and so he just i said how much he's like just take it so so that was nice. You know, it's, you can see it's, it's beat up, but Hey man, I don't care. It's a cool no. card. A uh, guy named Marty Berry. So now I got to hunt down some more Marty Berry cards. So my collection kind of takes me anywhere and everywhere. And I enjoy it because you learn about hockey history and you get to talk to some cool people. And here we are sitting talking about it right now, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in the, the basement here. I got the camera set up on the ironing board. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm surrounded by stuff, which is nice. 
That, that's amazing. And I know me and you both are of the age where we got into collectibles. There was no internet. There was, you didn't see right. every game on TV. You were yeah. limited to hockey night in Canada, basically, yeah. which featured the, the Leafs, or if you're in Quebec, the Habs would be on a, a lot of the time. So you grew up as either a Leaf or a Habs fan predominantly in Canada. I know mm -hmm. we're on up such sides of that as kids. I'm yeah. still rocking yeah. Leafs today. But like, it, it was so fun opening that pack, seeing the stats, seeing the player info. Like, it was the only way you knew the height, the weight, where they were from, That's the it. hometown. Like, it, it was just the whole thrill of opening that pack and chewing that old raspy ass fucking gum. Like, oh, that beautiful. hard cardboard gum, but we, we loved yeah. it so much. And and it just, like, like you said, it brought me up and forward. And I, I started collecting and I love your books. Your two about the hockey cards. Was there a favorite player or interview or someone you were geared up that was a favorite of yours when you were a kid that you got to meet a, and maybe a story from one of those books you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I was a Gretzky guy, you know. I, I was a huge Montreal Canadiens fan, but I grew up, I came of age. It'd be like if a kid now was was six years old when Connor McDavid was a rookie, but let's say he liked the Canadians of the Leafs, but let's say that six, seven-year-old kid was smart enough to know, ooh, something special's going on here. Well, I was smart enough to know, ooh, I love the Montreal Canadiens, but something special is going on here with this kid in Edmonton. And I remember my friend, so oh, Gretzky sucks. I'm like, no, he doesn't. This is so I anything and everything. When, like, I mean, we had it on Hockey Central last night. I brought up Pro Stars, the cereal. I ate Pro Stars. I <laughs> drank Seven Up. Then I switched to Coca Cola. You know, uh, if Wayne did it, I did it. So for the first book, I didn't end up getting Wayne, but for the second book, I had through a connection with Upper Deck. And it's funny, you know, because being in the media for a long time, you know, it's, it's way less than the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You know, it's, <laughs> I had Wayne Gretzky's cell number. I just, I could call everybody, but I'm like, I just can't call up Wayne Gretzky, yeah. man. I just don't have the guts to do it. So, you know, so I, I could, you know, I could name drop and stuff, but I'll try not to. I'm a pretty bad name dropper, but uh, <laughs> anyway, Upper Deck hooked me up and Mr. Wayne Gretzky called and we had a delightful chat about his rookie card and it was, it was awesome. And then, and it's so funny the way the world works, you know, then I wrote the Eddie Shack book and I was driving to work one day and Wayne, Wayne Gretzky called again. So I pulled up the road and interviewed him. And then, you know, a few weeks later, I, I had got to go uh, do an MC gig with Wayne Gretzky. And it's like, you spend all that time chasing them. And then he's right there and he's just an awesome guy. Like he, they say, never meet your heroes. No, meet your heroes. Um, nice. If they're hockey, if they're hockey players, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to have a delightful experience. I'm not, saying that about every every sport on the planet but yeah and you yeah, never it, know until you meet them because no. every everybody no matter who you are or what you do has those who will not like you and those that will like you so yeah. you, you can't base opinions on other people's until you meet them in person yourself i think yeah so so we, it was delightful meeting wayne and he was just awesome and we it's funny because we do have a lot of mutual friends and it, we're driving around for this gig with uh this MC gig, he's like, how long did it take us? So well, I never met you. I'm like, why did it take you three years to call me back for hockey card books? We were chirping each other. It was a lot of fun. So <laughs> yeah. getting to interview Wayne Gretzky for my second hockey card, hockey card book was fun. But the other fun thing about it was calling guys who never had their story told, right? I really like yes. unearthing stories. And that's why I did one night only and one to remember. But um, calling a guy like Craig Fisher, who was a big time scorer, and you'll remember the old International Hockey League, right? It was yep. right on par with the yep. American League back in the day. Calling a guy like Craig Fisher, who at the time was coaching at the University of uh, Ottawa Institute of Technology in Oshawa, calling him and getting his story. Reaching out and finding a guy like Bill Armstrong, who sells real estate in London, Ontario, and learning through him and through our buddy Jeff Merrick that the Michigan, you know, the Michigan goal that all yep. the kids are doing. Started so in the 70s, probably, didn't it? Uh, some say the Russians were doing it in 72 in practice, but the first guy to, to predominantly do it professionally was not, well, Mike Legg did it for Michigan in 95, but Bill Armstrong, who had an OPG rookie card in 91, 92, uh, he did it all the time in the International League, and they used to call the call it the do it, because the crowd would scream, do it, do it, do it, do it, and he'd... And the, the PR teams for the International League, his International League teams and his American League teams, they keep sending it to ESPN saying, show this, show this, because this is back in the day where you wouldn't see the highlight that night and they'd send it in. Yeah. And this is, again, how much broadcasting has changed. You know, if something's shot on a phone and it's a little grainy, we'll still, shoot, we'll still show it. 
Yeah, well, back YouTube then, YouTube type. Right. YouTube quality. Yeah. So back then, they're sending in the crappy tape, and ESPN's going, well, this isn't broadcast quality. We can't show it. <laughs> so Mike Legg, who plays for the University of Michigan, ends up at a hockey school as he's growing up with Bill Armstrong. They're both from London. Bill Armstrong's doing this thing on the ice. He ends up showing Mike Legg. Bill Armstrong did it on a Friday night or a Thursday night. And then that Friday night or Saturday night, Mike Legg did it at the NCAA's top quality on ESPN. It becomes the Michigan. Wow. A little, little did people know before that it was the do it. So I liked that, that interview. That's amazing. I For love me, that story. Just, yeah. as, just as thrilling as, you know, uh, uh, talking to Wayne Gretzky or talking to, you know, Gila Fleur, like I did for my books or Brett Hall or Dougie Gilmore. So right, or the uh, forgotten 60 goal scorer, Benny Maru. Yep. So finding these stories for me is, is really cool. And that's something I really enjoyed about the, the book process. And it's also what I enjoy about collecting hockey and baseball cards, hockey cards. Like, I mean, I didn't know about flash Hollett until, until I started collecting hockey cards and, and you, you know, I, I always say there's no such thing as a common card. So, you know, just turn it over and read a little, and you might find something there. So that's, that's a okay. long answer to a short question. And the amount and the amount of times that we used to waste and just ruin our cards back in our day between the bike spokes or playing yeah. flipsies and corners and everything else against the wall at school and stuff the trade cards even though you were ruining them the same fucking cards you're playing with so it's yeah like the amount weird. of gretzky's and lemieux i, and, I, and I, I remember and, i remember oh. seeing kids putting them in bike spokes and i'd go no nah, i'm not doing that and i didn't i my health firm I, I yeah. did until I was 11 and then I learned, but it, before yeah. then I did not wise up. There was a two or three year period where I was horrible for that, Kenny. And sure, I we all were. regret it. Yeah. I got a great Gila Fleur over there. I threw it up on my Instagram account the other night. It has a tack in it from where I had it on my wall as a kid oh, in 1984. Really? So that's yeah, amazing. I, I tacked them on the wall. I just didn't put them in the bike spoke. So, so who was your favorite hab growing up? Was it LaFleur? Uh, he, he was, was the one first. of my favorite habs, even yeah. as a Leafs fan. It was him and Larry Robinson and Ken Dryden yeah. that I liked. Yeah, Guy was the first, and then Guy retired suddenly in, in the fall of 85. And uh, then it was, you know, then it was, I loved Max Naslin. I loved Mike McPhee because he was a Nova Scotia guy. I yeah. loved Shane Corson, and I loved Stefan Riche. Those were the those are the top five right off the top of my head. Riche because nice. he was a sniper. Corson because in the 85 or 86 World Junior Championships, I remember on CBC with Don Whitman calling and he said he was drafted by Montreal. So I mean, like, course, Mike, because he was from Nova Scotia. Matt's because he was just a small little scoring machine. And I recently got a Matt Snazlin Torspo helmet. Oh, so nice. th those, those are the guys who jumped off the page to me immediately. Well, not the same Naslin, but I got the Naslin behind yeah, you. Yeah, Marcus up there, and, right? Yep. Yeah. And then... Uh, that's actually the big tough Russian defenseman autograph picture from the 72 summit series behind really? me on top there as well. I, I, just forget, I forget his, I forget his name. Oh my goodness. It's not but, Yakushev. No. Uh, anyway, I just got a, I finished a 72 book last night. Scott Morrison has it coming out. I got an advanced copy of it. It's fantastic. Oh, what's the name of it? Jesus. It's upstairs. I, I just have the advanced reading copy. I don't even know if it has the title on it, but it's by Scott Morrison. And it's by it's Scott just, Morrison. I'll look yeah, out for that. Fan, Cause Scott's, a walk in hockey history yeah, book himself, yeah. but it's an awesome book. It's coming out in June from uh, Simon Schuster. So I know you're also a big wrestling guy. Were you ever into the wrestling cards? Like I know I have a bunch of wrestling, old wrestling yeah. cards too, from like WrestleMania one and two, Hulk Hogan, yeah. Andre the They're Giant. worth a lot of money now. They're, they're getting momentum. No, I never, I remember my brother having a few of them, but never anything I got into, but I was a massive wrestling guy. And you know what? I probably never got into them because I'm sure in, Picto County, Nova Scotia, they probably weren't, you know, readily available. They were, they were so there. Prominent. Yeah. Right. Weren't so prominent. That's the word I'm looking for. But yeah, I never, never got into them. No. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Would you ever step inside the ring as a bit guest referee or anything on I, WWE? I, I, have I could so see it. <laughs> I once wrestled in a charity contest in, at Cowboys and Calgary in a sumo suit against my there fellow sports. Yeah. Against my fellow sports anchor, Derek the Body Bidwell. I'd like a wrestling manager would be a good gig. I've been slap chop Ric Flair style by Mike Cowboy Hughes. <laughs> and I was once put in some submission holds by Stu Hart in the Hart Dungeon. That's amazing, man. Amazing. Yeah, that was uh, what, do you, 
What do you think of the uh, goal scoring race this year? Austin Matthews, Dry Seidel. How do you think that's going to break down? And then you could even include like Kreider, Ovechkin, and uh, Kyle Connor. I think rounds out the top five, doesn't it? I love Kyle Connor, as I say on He's TV one of my all the time. He yeah. Scores goals for a living. He looks like a sniper. But it's awesome. I mean, two Canadian teams, Dry Seidel on the Oilers and Matthews. With Matthews at forty nine now. I wish yeah. that the Maple Leafs would get. Give- would give more respect to Rick Five, who holds the Leafs record for most goals in a season with 54. Yes. Like, retire number 22, please. I've tweeted that out a few times. Retweet Thank it, you. Dagan. Thank you. And the fact that Rick's name's not coming up a little more is a mystery to me. The fact that his numbers aren't retired anymore is a mystery to me. But uh, Austin Matthews is five goals away from tying Rick Five for most ever, ever by a Leaf. I love the race between Dreisaitl and Matthews. It's It kind of reminds me of when we grew up, right? That guys going tit for tat it, it's great yep. and i mean you look at some of the numbers around the league and i mean matthew kachuk's 80 points i'm like i always envision him as a 60 point guy so yeah it's same. great to, to see it open it up you look at johnny goodrow i mean when he was under when daryl sutter came along i'm like oh he's he's finished he's been the best he's ever been um to see matthew snipe is awesome to see dry saddle snipe is awesome mcdavid do his thing so i, I like that we're, There's so many know, great young players. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing honestly, right now. Hockey's amazing again right now for yeah, me. I love it. It's a combination of these kids growing up. I think within the new rules, right after that first lockout when yeah. everything changed in the, I guess it would be the fall of '05, uh, or no, fall of '06, and no, no cup in '05. Yeah, fall of '05. So they all. And the other thing is. They all grew up with these sticks, right? With the composites. They know how to wield the composites and what young kids can, like my kid, I go to his games. He's under nine. What some of these kids can do with the sticks now, it's It's just, yeah. Like, I mean, (laughs) when the composite came along and guys in the NHL switched to the composite, okay, took some getting used to for sure. But these kids all grew up with this. It's all they know. So what they can do with the stick and the skills they have, I mean, just Marshan last night against the Leafs, the way he can get a shot off is just, it's incredible. Phenomenal how quick that re- the release is yeah. on all of the players we've been talking about. I still can't take a damn pass with the thing. I still use my shirt with 50-30. <laughs> well, but, your, your hockey career ended early, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It still continues to this day, sadly. But, um, yeah, the skill level is, it's way above where it's ever been. I don't, I wouldn't call the game better. I don't. You know, I, I still like that grit and I like that accountability factor. 80s hockey was my favorite by far. Yeah. I like standing up for your teammate. I think the league needs more of that. And, you know, don't chirp a guy and run behind the linesman right away. You know, <laughs> that stuff annoys me. But the exactly. skill level's off the charts. And the goaltending but, equipment's still way too damn big. Oh, I agree, man. It, it all goalie, started you know? back in the 90s, man. It was ridiculous. It went from them little skinny Billy Smith pad in the early 80s, late 70s, and it came drying yeah. pads to like, now all of a sudden it looks like they're wearing body armor all over. Well, like, I, I always say, I always say, if you look at an old hockey card, a guy on Instagram sent me this. I love it. It's one of my favorite cards. Cheech is 84, 85. He drew that. Oh, and I always say, if you look at an old John hockey Garrett, card. John Garrett, one of my favorites. Oh, Cheech is a beauty. If you look at an old hockey card, you always say, what's that behind the goal? And I go, <laughs> oh, that's the net. You can see it. Yeah. So the, mind you, the goalies were smaller. Cheech isn't a big guy, but the pads weren't crazy either so there's got to be a happy medium in there and guys will say oh they're shooting the puck harder than they ever had I'm like look if they can make a bulletproof vest that well, effect they can cut down on the hockey, hockey yeah, I, I, but I'd, whatever. Play that. I'd have bruises all over my legs and my yeah and i'm not saying we, after practice we go, like yeah like yeah we don't have to go back happy to medium we don't need to go overboard right exactly, exactly. I, is there any playoff race you're looking forward to seeing this year like for example like Freddie Anderson facing off against the Leafs of Carolina. Uh, the Leafs met, and obviously the Battle of Alberta. I want to see Calgary Edmonton. So I yeah. refuse to call it the Battle of Alberta. I will not okay. say that on Fair TV. Enough. All right. Because I don't Fair think enough. there's been one since about 1991. But okay, I won't disagree playoffs, with that. <laughs> if it happens in the playoffs, there will be a Battle of Alberta again. So It'll I'm, reignite it. I just want to see Calgary uh, Edmonton. I want to see it somehow happen. It would be so good. I so Same. want to see that. Yeah, that's the one I want to see. Absolutely. Being a Leafs fan, I got list. the Freddie Anderson angle because they basically shunned him and said yeah. you're not good enough. And now yeah. they're having all the goaltending issues. So that one for me and Calgary and Edmonton is the other one. And I'm hoping Winnipeg makes it in because, well, 
I, not many people know this, but I, I've got a real soft spot for the Flyers and the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, uh, yeah. Leafs, big soft spots for those. Well, I'm a big Dale guys. Howard Jack guy, so. Yeah. Yes, I was as well growing up. Oh, there you go. That yeah. beautiful. One of the, again, talking about doing books and stuff, you get to meet Dale and I emceed his golf tournament. I emceed that for a few years, and he was such a wonderful guy. He was like, you would never know. And this goes for most addicts, you hockey hall of famers. But you would never know Dale was a hockey hall of famer. He was just Dale. Oh, Same yeah. with me. Doug Gilmore was just Doug. But Dale was the most kind, generous guy. He was funny. He was just a just a wonderful guy. He was always just kind of laughing and giggling. And, uh, you know, we miss Dale a lot. So, yeah, I would love to see the Jets going around. I'd love to see the Jets get in. They're a fun team to watch. Like Kyle Connor, just hey, fun to watch. They got know? a lot of players. I even like, I like Hellebuck. I like it right on down the list. Like, right. They got a goalie. If they sneak yeah. in, they can steal them a series, maybe. Right. But I still yeah. think that Carolina is the best matchup for the Leafs because I think they both play a similar style. I think if the Leafs go up against Tampa Bay or Florida, they're on six max. I, I don't mind. So, like, I know it's backwards to say this. But I, I'd prefer to play Tampa than Florida, if you're yeah. getting, if, if you're going to have to play one of the two. Florida just scares me. I just don't want to play best. If, if I'm the least, I would want yeah, to play best. Yeah, hot goalie, but, especially with their offensive struggles in the past playoff yeah. years. I don't have to explain to Leafs fans. Right, but you know what? They're they're they're. It's not like when we grew up, right? They're no easy matchups. It's no, not exactly. like the Habs playing the like. It's not like you know you're running into the Minnesota North Stars or something like that in 1980 six or something like that yeah you know, the old norris different rivalries that yeah. uh they were the norris is the best the chuck <laughs> norris is the best man <laughs> yep that oh i love that i miss them days oh see that's yeah exactly i like goals and the odd scrap man big big athletic saves i like i like something that'll bring you out of your seat be it a goal a tilt a save a, a huge hit that doesn't lead to everybody whining and grouping together and hugging each other like thank you you, you, you get hit watch. hard you used to get up target that player and repay the hit right you'd take a number maybe you'd get them later like yeah. uh i always call the when they all get together in face wash i call it a millennial line brawl because all the guys <laughs> were blind brawl i'm like what are you talking about yeah. That's not a line brawl. Oh, it drives me nuts. Yeah, me too. I'm the angry old man at work. You know that. <laughs> so, Kenny, any hobbies or uh, interests that you have besides sports outside of work or sports that people might be surprised by? I don't know if they'd be surprised, but I'm a big stand-up fan. Uh, my brother's a stand-up, Peter Anthony. Check him out. He uses a different last name because when he started, he swore too much, and Dad wouldn't use him. Let Reed, let him use Reed, but. Um, yeah, I used to go to a ton, well, before I was a dad and working nights, I used to go to a ton of live stand-up with my brother when he played, he's based out of Halifax now, but he was based out of Toronto for years. So I'd always be down at, down at Yuck Yucks, uh, watching my brother. So huge stand-up fan, huge music guy, like most people, uh, kind of like, like anything. Check out the Black Moods. They're my new favorite band. Oh, I, really? I stumped, I, I, I've never heard of them. No. The Black Moods. More people need to stumble them into stumbled into a bar in Cleveland after a Cleveland Indians game a few years back. My brother and I were down there for the National Sports Collectors Convention. Yeah. And this band's on stage and my brother and I kind of look at each other after the second song. And we're like, these guys are friggin' awesome. They're a three man band. They're from Arizona. The Black Moods. If you like kind of upbeat rock and they're rockers, man, it's, you know, which is my kind of music. And uh, they're awesome. So the black moves, nice. check them I'll, out. I'll check them out for sure. Anyways, yeah. Kenny, I appreciate you being so generous with your time today. I know you're a busy man. You got kids at school. You're probably going to pick, pick them up, up soon. I appreciate it, buddy. Take care. And hopefully I can have you on down the road in the future. Absolutely. Dag and pucks in deep, buddy. See you at work. Peace. It's Dag Swag. It's Dag Swag. It's Dag Swag. It's Dag Swag.